church's teaching and fellowship, a breaking bread, and prayer, and, and praying for poor. If so, please say, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. So some of these 
be your Sunday school teachers. And some of them are going to be people maybe for your coaches. Some of them are going to be your big kid friends. Some of them might tell you not to run or not to climb or something like that. But this is your church family. People who love you already and will take care of you and let you always know how much you are. You can look at the other children who are now grown in this church and see the love that God has and the way that God cares for God's children in this place. The way that we're family. The way that we love each other. The ways that The ways that we are your people, and God, I am so thankful for the blessing of this child and for this family. I'll never get anywhere. We're a family that is like this. People care and people reach out, and teenagers read scripture. Thank you. 
experienced a great gain while others have experienced loss. Some feel confident in the future. Others are wracked by uncertainty and anxiety. So whatever our needs are today, we ask for your power in our lives. There is no need which cannot be faced when we present it to you. So we ask for your power in our lives. We thank you for the blessings you've given us, for mothers and those who love us like mothers, people who nurture us in body and spirit, people who help us when we fall and hold our hands when we need reassurance. We thank you, O oh God, for all the people whose lives of love have helped shape our relationship with you. And we pray, O oh God, for those for whom this is a hard day. Embrace their grief. Help them know your presence and surround them with your healing love. We pray that you would heighten our sense of community and our responsibility for others. Give us the ability to do love, not just speak love. Help us to step into life, keeping our promise to be your love in the world, even when it's difficult or unpopular or time-consuming. May we be willing to set aside our own agendas and schedules to do love for others as you have done for us. We pray that you would bless the whole world, bring justice and peace, empower us that we will not be daunted by the difficulty of working for justice, peace, and equity among the peoples of the world. And hear us as we pray together the prayer that you taught your people to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Where are you going? 
Bible, Thomas asks, Why can't I follow you? Questions Peter. I'll be back, promises Jesus. I love the parallel that Craig draws between these things because they touch our own experiences of parental intimacy and relationship. It reminds me of conversations I've had with my own parents, conversations I had just yesterday with Kate when I got ready to leave town. Mom, when will you be back? These are intimate conversations with people we are close to, people who are our family. They are conversations that break our hearts and they're sweet because they remind me of the promise of our precious relationships. And Jesus has that relationship with his disciples and has that relationship with us. Jesus says over and over how much he loves his disciples and loves us. He keeps building the intimacy. He says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. You didn't choose me, I chose you. Over and over and over, Jesus tries to help the disciples completely understand how completely he loves them. But of course, none of our human brains can really take that in. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. I've said these things so that you, my joy might be in you and that your joy might be complete. You are my friends. The translation there is your literally loved ones. You are my loved ones. So tucked in the middle of this strange part of the book of John are these farewell conversations. These places where Jesus tries to answer the question, here's where I'm going. You can't go with me, but I'll be back. And there's one word that's used, the only time in the Gospel of John that the word commandment is used is in this particular scripture. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. It's the only place that Jesus makes a demand, a command, a requirement. To love one another as he's loved us. Now, the word for love in Greek is an active voice verb. Never passive voice. We hear the word so much. We say, I love you, and we sing cars that are about love, and we love pizza, and we have so many things that we talk about loving. But in Scripture, love is not about words, it's always about action. In the Old Testament and the New Testament, love is always about doing something. There's a theologian named Francis Taylor Gensch who writes, about Jesus' culture. Love seeks the well-being of others in a concrete effort on their behalf. In other words, love is something that we do for the well-being of all people, sometimes regardless of how we feel about them, what we think of them, and what they believe. Henry Nowen, who is one of my very favorite theologians, says what Gitch said, I think, in the most loving way. If we wait for a feeling of love before we love, we may never learn to love well. But when we do love, even if others are not able to respond with love, we will discover that our feelings catch up with our actions. Doing love is core to what Jesus calls in tender words, in vulnerable spaces, in relationships. He speaks of love constantly. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I've loved you, you should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Loving others as Jesus loved us is not easy. It's a simple sentence and we all know it. Love one another as Jesus loved us. But it's a hard thing to do. It's hard when people are different or they hurt our feelings or we disagree with them or they look different. It's hard, especially when there's division, to love one another as Jesus loved us, to seek the 
well-being of other people, whether we feel like we want to or not. One of the ways that God calls us to do love as a church is to baptize babies, to worship together, to come together, and to baptize all of God's children, babies or adults. So today as we baptize Cora, we have a new invitation, a new opportunity to love her. We have made promises to love her, not just with our words, but with our actions. As her parents and her grandparents, as aunts and uncles and cousins and friends, as church family. This is what we promise to do for our church family no matter what. To love the baby, to put her needs before our own, to bend over backwards to keep her safe, to dance a jig if that's what it takes to help her know Jesus. We are called to do that kind of love. And it's easy when a baby is like Laura. It's easy and precious to do that kind of love. But it is a promise we make to do God's love for all people. No matter their age or their cuteness, no matter their beliefs or their behaviors, no matter if we have time, no matter, no matter what. In this in-between time in the Gospel of John, Jesus spent his disciples, he commands them, do love, do love in the world. I want to tell you one of my very favorite stories. There was a man named Brad who grew up in a church in Nashville, Tennessee. And when he was an adult, he moved to Colorado. There were parents who were in the church in Nashville who had known him years ago. Their son, Mark, was in Colorado skiing. He was in a terrible accident. They got that phone call that their son was in terrible accident would need emergency surgery as, long, as soon as they could get him stabilized. There was a terrible storm. So they had a very hard time finding a flight. And those of you who are parents can imagine what that must have felt like, not to be able to get to your child, terrified of what might be, and not able to even get a plane ticket. So the mom and dad racked their brains. They tried to think of anything they could that might be able to help their son. He wasn't alert enough to talk to them on the phone. And they racked their brains. And about 2 o'clock in the morning, they had a thought. You know, there's that man Brad. I think he moved to Colorado um, about 15 years ago. Our child wouldn't even know him. But do we call him at 2 o'clock in the morning? And what can he do in the middle of a storm? But they didn't know what to do. And as parents, we know, so you do it anyway. And they picked up the phone, and they called Brad. They hadn't spoken to him in years. Brad lived about 40 minutes from the hospital. There was a terrible storm. No matter what, he would have a hard time getting to the hospital, so they didn't explain it. They expect that of him. They called him, and they got him on the phone, and they said, we're so sorry to wake you up. Do you remember us? Sleepily, he said, I do. And they began the story of what had happened to their son. And before they got through the second sentence, Brad said, I'm on my way. The parents were floored. And they said, oh, it's too dangerous. We didn't mean for you to go in the middle of the night. And he stopped them again and he said, I was there the day that Mark was baptized. I made a commitment to help him grow up to know Christ and to be part of the family of faith. He is part of my family. I am on my way. Brad got there. He stayed with Mark until he got into surgery. He was there when surgery was over. He even was sitting there holding his hand when finally the parents got there. He was not just loving and word. He was doing the love. And we do love not because we have to, but because of the love that Jesus has done for us. So when we imagine the disciples, like children, playing on the floor, asking Jesus where he's going and why they can't go, and what it is that they're supposed to do, who's going to take care of them, Jesus says this very simple line, love one another as I have loved you. So let us be a church that loves, not just in the way we talk, 
Let us be a church that loves in the way we do. People who do the love of Christ as he has done for us. We have. 